Hi everybody, Physics Ninja. Today what I want to do is I want to redo one of my previous videos. Um, I get a lot of questions from my video on power transmission. Should you use high voltage or high current to transmit electricity uh, along transmission lines? And based on all the questions that I was getting from that video, I went back and looked at it and the numerical example that I picked uh, wasn't the greatest. So today's video is to clarify that point, okay? I'm gonna explain things a little bit simpler. I'll put the uh, link to the previous video that I did uh, down in the description below. Okay, but today all we're gonna do is use two equations. You're gonna use Ohm's law, which says the voltage across a resistor is the value of that resistance multiplied by the amount of current flowing through it. And we're gonna use a power equation, right? The rate at which energy is lost or transmitted, right? You can write as V times I, that's it. We're gonna use these two equations and you'll understand this problem a little bit better uh, with this video, hopefully. All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. It's the best way to support what I do. All right, let's get started. All right, what we're gonna do is simplify this picture up above, which says, you know, power starts at, it's generated by the power plant. It might go through step up and step down transformers before it eventually gets down to your home. But we're interested in this middle section here where we have the transmission. All right, so I'm gonna represent that with this little cartoon here. We have a box where there's some voltage here at the step up transformer and some other voltage here at the step down transformer. Uh, between both of those boxes, I have a line or a resistor, okay? Again, just a simple depiction. Uh, the resistance of this conductor, of this transmission line, I call that R, okay? And that's gonna be measured uh, in ohms. Nothing surprising here. Now I can represent this cartoon here with just a small circuit diagram here. So again, V in at one terminal, V out at the other, and I have a current I flowing in this direction here. Okay, so the first thing you can do is write Ohm's law. Right, so Ohm's law simply says V equals to RI, right? That's kind of common. How do you apply that to this uh, particular setup right here? So remember, V is the difference in voltage between the two, okay? So the way I would actually write this would be like this. So I would say V in, I start over here, and then I'm going this way. If I cross a resistor, I'm going to get a voltage drop across that resistor. The voltage drop is given by Ohm's law. Uh, the resistance times the current. Let me put resistance first. Resistance times the current. And at the end, I'm gonna finish over here at V out. This is V out. All right, this is nothing more than Ohm's law, right? You can see if I bring V out on the other side, I would have V in minus V out equals to Ri. Okay, so the difference in voltage equals to the resistance times the current. I'm gonna call this equation one. All right, let's go on the next page now and consider uh, the power in this circuit. All right, next step, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply, just write this down, uh, equation one, so equation one by the current, okay? The current is the same everywhere, and you'll see why in a minute. Uh, if I do that, I wanna call this equation two. Uh, what you end up getting is then is just VI, uh, VN rather, multiplied by the current minus, if I multiply by I, I get R, multiplied by I squared. And the last term here is V out, multiplied by the current I. Now, let's go see what each one of these terms represents. All right, so this here, V in, this is at the first transformer. It's basically the power that goes in on the input side, okay? So let me just call that power in. Okay. Uh, this guy here is going to be what is the rate at which energy is coming out on this side. So this is kind of power out. And the last one, the middle one, well, I guess what this one's going to be. Now, this one is an Ri squared. Okay, this is actually uh, the power that is dissipated or energy loss per unit time in that transmission line, because there is current flowing through a resistance. I am going to lose some energy every second. Okay, that is what this term represents. All right, what I wanna do now is I wanna consider a numerical example. So let's go ahead now and look at these equations, and we're gonna put some numbers into these things. All right, so let's go on the next page and we'll introduce um, numbers for the resistance of the transmission line and also the power in. It could be like the power generated by the power plant. All right, then we're gonna compare all the various terms in these two equations. 
All right, I wanna consider two cases now, a high voltage case and a lower voltage case. And let's consider this table here. So the first thing I have is the power in. All right, so the power in is the power on this side, for example, from the generator. What I'm gonna assume for this is that it's the same for both cases, and I'm gonna assume it's five million watts, five times 10 to the six watts. All right, so if I go fill out this table, that means both of these terms here are going to have the same. Right, five million is the input power. Okay, uh, now I wanna consider two cases. I said a high voltage case and a low voltage case. Uh, the high voltage case, I'm gonna assume it's 100,000 volts, okay? For the lower case, I won't make it too low. Let's just make it like 25,000 volts. So we can compare these two, okay? Now, how do I get the current? Okay, so in order to get uh, the current for each case, we have to remember that the power, this power in has to be equal to the voltage in multiplied by the current value, right? So for each one of these cases, you can say what value of the current when I multiply by the voltage gives me the 5 million, okay? So you just do this, right? Just rearrange this equation. You get that the current for each case is P in divided by V in, all right? And you do this for each case. And what I do then, and I obtain this value. So for clearly for V in, I'm gonna have lower current. This one here, I have 50 amperes, okay? Now in this other one, I'm gonna have a higher current. So I'm gonna get 200 amps for that case. Okay, so now let's keep going. Now the next uh, column, what I wanna do is I wanna find how much power is going to be lost if it's transmitted here with these current values across this resistor. All right, now we have to make some assumption. All right, for the value of the resistance, since this is a good conductor, I'm just gonna take a low value. Let's just take it to be 50 ohms is the value of the resistance. Okay, assume it has a certain length, it has a certain cross section. Uh, maybe you could take some more physical values for that, but let's just take 50 ohms to be a low value of resistance for a long conductor. Okay, so the way you fill out uh, this last section there is how would you find the power dissipated? That is this middle term over here, that purple equation over here. Find the power dissipated. Again, you would simply use that it's the value of that resistance multiplied by the current flowing through it. So now you have to do that for each case. Right, we're gonna have the high voltage case and the low voltage case. For each one, we have a 50 ohm resistor. What we're going to change now is the value of the current for each case. For the high voltage, I have 50 squared. For the low voltage case or higher current, I have 200 squared. All right, we put that in the calculator and then we're gonna get two numbers. Uh, for the high voltage case, uh, that's the top one, I get 125,000, that's measured in watts, okay? Let me go ahead and put that one up here. How much energy is dissipated every second? Uh, for the low voltage or the higher current case, uh, here you get two million, two times 10 to the six watts. Let's go ahead and write that one down. All right, the last thing, I could add another column now. Let's go ahead and calculate what is the voltage out for each one of those cases. To calculate the voltage out, what you do is you use the first equation. You know what voltage in is, I know what the resistance is, and I know what the current is. So all we do now is, let me make a little bit more space and calculate the voltage out for each case. Then we filled out the entire table. Uh, for case A, what we get here is V out is equal to uh, V in. Uh, v in was 100,000. All right, uh, minus, well, 50 is the value of the resistance and the value of the current for that case was also 50. So at the end here, you get 97,500. Okay, let me write that. 97,500 volts at right here. And for the other case, you're gonna get 100, uh, not 100,000 rather, I'm sorry, 25,000. Uh, minus the value of the resistance times the current was 200 for this case, All right? This is case A, this is case B. Uh, for that one here, I had a voltage of 15,000. All right, so 15,000 volts. All right, and the last thing I wanna do to fill out this table here, I'm gonna add another column. Again, I had a certain amount of energy going in. I had a power in. 
and I had some power dissipated. What I want to know is how much power do I have on the output? So let's calculate the power on the output. Uh, for you to calculate that, uh, all you need to do is use the second equation, right? The second equation gives you the power out here. So let's go ahead and do that. So the power out, I'll just call it P out, simply going to be equal to whatever power is going in minus the power dissipated or the power loss. I'll just call it P dis. So here's what we have. So we had 5 million for both cases, 5 times 10 to the 6 watts going in, and then minus only a little bit of loss, right? 125,000. So what are we left with? We haven't lost a whole bunch. If I'm just going to keep three significant figures here, say 4.88 times 10 to the 6 watts. You put that up here in the 4.88 times 10 to the 6 watts how about in the low voltage case in the low voltage case we have p out again it's five million five times ten to the six minus we've lost what two million two times ten to the six so all we're left with here is ten mil uh, sorry ten we're left with three million watts so go ahead and write that 3.00 say times ten to the six watts all right, now if you just look at this table, it should become clear which one you would rather use, right? Why would we pick high voltage over low voltage? All right, so you start by generating all this power, right? You've gone through a lot of effort in order to generate power, right? You created a power plant. Now, if you're gonna transmit it, what you wanna do is you wanna make the power dissipated through the conductor, through this transmission line as low as possible. Because at the end, what you want to do before this gets kind of uh, sent off to the homes or to the businesses, right? You want to have as much as whatever you generated to be able to distribute that power to the homes, all right? So if you choose a high voltage case, you're going to end up dissipating a lot less power in that resistor and you're going to have more energy to supply um, to the rest of the community. All right, so that's kind of a nice little example to illustrate why high voltage is preferable over low voltage. All right, hopefully this video uh, helps you. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.